And welcome back to Kingsport 1886, uh, session two. Uh, we have a small cast replacement for the night. Uh, unfortunately, Serafina is not here to play uh, Siobhan, but we have a longtime Kingsporter, Bethany, who will be joining us uh, and bringing in her own little fun character. Uh, so I'm looking forward to this. Uh, why don't, I'm Kat Raman. Why don't we introduce everyone else? Uh, why don't we start with Bethany? Uh, actually, let's not do that. Let's start the other way. Let's start with uh, Leandro, who's playing Alice R. Hollow. Hi, uh, I'm Leandro. Um, last seen in Kingsport being a moody teenage ghost. Now I'm a more confused, still kind of moody, but more innocent, unsure hollow. Uh, yeah, I'm playing uh, Alice McBride. Um, she was born of a wish, specifically her sister's wish, because the real Alice McBride was someone who didn't care for family and ran off with a Welsh girl somewhere off to the seas. And so her sister Eliza's like, no, it's not gonna happen. She's not gonna break her father's heart. Went to the woods, made a pact with something. She's quite coy with the figure, with, with, with what happened, and brought out me, apparently, and Alice not the Alice, and it's it's tough trying to be someone when you don't have much experience being that someone, and it, everyone else kind of knows or feels it, specific characters, specific PCs realize it. Um, last week, she rescued a fox, had what she, what she thought was flirting with Siobhan, and made a deal with the master, walked into a, gla uh, to a looking glass, and is now face to face with a dying old woman. Well, she's not that old, but she is dying. Uh, so next, uh, why don't we go to David, who is playing Jonathan Brody, our mortal. Hi, yeah, um, I'm David. My uh, last excursion into Kingsport was 1962, uh, so the far flung future, um, where I was playing um, a fae. Um, Xanthus Price, but uh, now um, this uh, this time I'm playing um, Jonathan Brody, the mortal, as mentioned. Um, he's a, um, a kid, grew up um, in the docks of Kingsport, um, is on a scholarship to the teaching academy uh, that the, uh, the other uh, people are at. Um, he is, he's a mortal. He is a perfectly normal, average guy. Um, he about the only thing of, of particular note about him at the minute is that he kind of has a crush on Finch. Um, and I'm sure that'll be fine. Yeah, everything, everything always turns out fine in Kingsport for some thing. Uh, why don't we go next to Daryl, who is playing Finch Greenwood, our queen. Uh -huh. Hey there, I am Daryl. I am previously of Kingsport 1692, so for the far flung past, where I played a Greenwood of a very different sort. But this time around in 1886, I am playing Finch Greenwood, the Queen. And the thing about Finch is he is nouveau riche. He is um, beautiful, intelligent, and not good for much else. But he puts his charms and his intelligence and his wiles to good use by getting people to do what he wants. He's growing his own little following, which he calls his flock of little birds. And uh, he has set his sights on a certain mortal boy to add to his collection. And we'll see how that goes because uh, it ended on a bit of a standoff last time, so. Yeah, well, there was definitely some talk of positions, as I recall. Uh, and finally, last but not least, Bethany, who is playing Helen Fisher, our witch. Uh, yeah, so um, uh, Helen is uh, the daughter of, like, starving artist parents who are, uh, you know, if, if there were hippies in 1886, they would be hippies. Um, they're, you know, idealistic and uh, take the wrong things way too seriously and uh, very, like, 
practicality only enters when absolutely necessary. Um, so Helen has kind of rebelled by like uh, trying to act um, more uh, practical and adult than her parents. Problem is that she doesn't have a lot of great examples of this. So um, she may or may not screw it up on a regular basis. There were, in fact, uh, Victorian hippies. They were called Bohemians. There we go. Yes, that is, that's the word I was looking for when I was filling this thing out. <laughs> that's fantastic. Bohemians. Uh, cool. They call me Mimi. I don't know why. Uh, that's a great joke if you're an opera lover. If not, just don't worry. I, don't, yeah, don't worry. I didn't say it. <laughs> so, uh, normally what I like to do when I jump people in is, uh, we'll let you do your, uh, your backstory questions. And then if anybody wants to hop in and recycle one of theirs on, uh, on Helen, and that will that will be fun. Then we'll do a little homeroom stuff, and then uh, we'll find out what's going on with stuff. So, uh, so why don't you do your backstory now? Well, yeah. Let's see. I have start the game with two sympathetic tokens. Decide whose and what they are. Um, well, let's see. We have, we have three other people. Uh, I definitely have something from Alice. Um. And would I have something from Finch or Jonathan? I'm totally fine if it's Finch. I think so. I think Finch would, yeah. Um, I think Finch is less likely to notice if something small goes missing. Um, so uh, what do I have that like you dropped at some point or just never noticed it was missing? I don't. I don't know that I maybe dropped it, but um, I think that a uh, like a certain cameo that uh, I found in the attic would probably be the ideal. Okay. Thing. Nice. Um, oops. One day I will remember where my tabs are. Um, and what do I have that belong to Alice? Um, let's say it's a pen. Pen? Uh, cool. Yeah, I think it used to belong to the to the real Alice, but it was one that you know I I I started using, but it, it's not one of the things I'm attached to because I can feel it's not mine. But it was in, uh, but I used it enough that I could claim it for my own. But I'm free to let that fall by the wayside because. You know, you know, you know how it is when you're, you're like you're trying on uh, another person's skin and it feels weird. Yeah, I know People exactly that, how that yeah. is. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, and somebody here caught me rummaging through their friend's stuff. Uh, so I guess that's probably Jonathan, since uh, I don't have a. Sympathetic token for him. Sure thing. Uh, I'm wondering who it might have been. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know. Probably, I don't know. Who are your friends? I'm. It might have been um, Samuel Moore, um, who's. Um, it's probably either him or Louise. They're probably the two people um, Jonathan's closest to okay. um, in the class. So Samuel Moore is um, uh, African American. He's um, um, the son of a. Is he a lawyer or a preacher? I'm trying to think. His father. Uh, let's let's go with lawyer. Yeah. I think, yeah, uh, lawyer, civil war uh, veteran, yeah, yeah. That, that sort of thing. Um, and yeah, Louisa, um, who's another um, sort of scholarship student at the at the school. Um, cool. Um, yeah, I don't think I don't I don't have an opinion one one way or the other of like which of them I would have been trying to to get a token 
from that you caught me before I could. Um, so let's see. Uh, um, maybe Louisa. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yes, that works, Louisa. Um, and I'll have to think of why I I really want a token from her. <laughs> Because I'll probably try again if it was, you know, <laughs> to get caught once, right? Yeah, that is a good question. What do we know about Louisa? She's up from the docks. That's basically it. That's cool. Uh, She's so very studious and she is dedicated. She's clearly striving. She's getting, this is her ticket out and she's going to punch it. Maybe you're just trying to get the test answers. <laughs> That's entirely possible. Oh, dear. Maybe she had a copy of a book that you couldn't afford. Which is, be it. Yeah. Cool, 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 cool. Uh, so does anyone want to uh, you, uh, ask a backstory question for Helen? Because now would be the time. Um, yeah, I'd like to know, uh, so Helen, your family are Bohemians, but um, what is your experience with an exposure to people from like upper crust society? So for instance, do you have any experience with the Greenwoods or with the Hunter family? Um, hmm. I'm trying to think if they, if, if they're like, which direction they, they became Bohemians from. Um, uh oh you know what one of th one of them does and one of them doesn't uh they are they are so bohemian that they didn't really care about class differences when they got married um so i think uh my father is the less practical one so um he yeah he has uh uh some familiarity with the greenwoods i think um he talks a lot of shit about them when they're you know at home Uh, what does he do that's bohemian? Is he some sort of artist? Yeah, he is. He is an artist. Um, uh, I think he's he's most. No, he, he he would like to be a sculptor, uh, but like marble costs a lot more money than paint does, so he's mostly a painter. So, does your mother like totally buy into the bohemian thing, or does a part of her it a part of her miss like the the upper crust life that she kind of forsook to be with him? Um, no, he's he's the one who forsook the the upper crust life. Um, okay. She's she's a like uh, she came from a, a working class family. She actually has some practical skills. She's a seamstress. Um, you know when when she has to be. Uh, she's a poet when she doesn't have to be. <laughs> Uh, but um, yeah, she is. She is the. She, she has bought into it less than my father has. Like this was. This was romantic and uh, you know, uh, exciting when she was young. But like, it's the, the excitement has kind of worn off. And then I guess one more question I have is like, as as somebody who understands that like your father was rich. Do you ever resent that, like that you have to like live a harder life because of the choices he made? Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, I think I've gone through phases when I resented his, resented that a lot, and um, now it's just kind of uh, it's just rolled into the whole like yeah my my dad whatever <laughs> you know. Um, it's it's more uh it i'm not um uh i guess yeah i'm I, I right now i'm kind of like it's just one of the many things that make him kind of uh i don't take his opinion too seriously let's put it that way i don't think he's necessarily the wisest person but I don't like personally resent that uh, that we don't have money uh, at this point. I don't think. Cool. 
cool. Wow. Kingsport Bohemians. This is great. Uh, cool. Why don't we look at uh, the homeroom map, unless anyone has anything else they'd love to grill poor Helen about. <laughs> okay. So, Helen, where do you sit in homeroom? Um, behind Samuel. Uh, okay, so Joy, Tommy, and Magnus are uh, Finch's crew, his clique. Um, they're all well-to-do, right, Finch? Uh, yeah, my clique is all pretty well-to-do. Um, Magnus is the only one who kind of comes from, like, a family probably a little bit similar, like maybe one of, I think one of his parents married below his station. And, right. Yeah, and so that's why he, like, doesn't like uh, Alice or something like that. Or, yeah, he's kind of a jerk. <laughs> that's In awesome. general, yes. <laughs> that's also a valid option. <laughs> Um, so Helen, do you have any friends in class? Um, I mean, you can add, we can add a name to the map, so. Uh, I, I could, I could see being friends with either like Samuel or Louisa. Um, uh, mostly because like, yeah, you know, I have, I have inherited a little bit of my parents, you know, disregard for, uh, um, God, I cannot think of, uh, for propriety, you know, so like being friends with a black man, no problem being friends with like the, you know, the, the poor girl on scholarship also fine. Um, in fact, like if I'm, the, the more annoyed I am at like Finch's crew, the, the more I'm like, yes, I'm going to go like, hang out with the people that Finch would, wouldn't. Um, so I, I think I get along with both of them. Uh, cool. Uh, so who don't you get along with? I mean, besides Finch and his crew? Um, I, like, I think specifically, uh, oh, do, I, do you want me to add a new person here? Yeah, we could do that. Okay. Um, and I need my random uh, name generator again. Uh, uh, his name is Alan. And uh, I'm not sure. What, I don't know what his deal is. But uh, he just like he's... Um, um, He's always got something to say about like everybody, which you know is not necessarily a terrible thing. But um, he seems to uh, it, it's it's always like friends, enemies, whatever. He's he he's going to judge them for something. You're muted. I'm gonna shit. I keep doing it in reverse. Uh, yes, I gave him a German name, and he's very judgmental. Eh, it me. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. You ever hex anybody, Helen? I mean, in the classroom. I mean. Oh, in the classroom. No, I'm I'm considering hexing Alan if he opens his mouth again one more time. That's fantastic. That is that is fantastic. Uh, okay. Cool. We got a little stuff cooking now. Um. So to open tonight, I want to know what happened to Finch and Jonathan after uh, after they said their goodbyes. I'm just gonna just gonna keep rack turning up the winch on the tension for poor Alice. But let's find out quick what happened with those guys. Okay. Uh, so the tenor of the conversation when we left seemed like you were shutting me down, and that's indeed what you rolled. 
So I'm assuming that we parted ways. Um, I think that Finch probably did so graciously, but uh, how did that leave, um, like that definitely left him stewing a bit because he doesn't like to be told no. Yeah, I think, um... I think that kind of um, that Jonathan will have not quite stormed off, but yeah, he, he'll have sort of again been um, what's the word? Yeah, yeah, he, he he's kind of not happy at the the the, the way the whole thing turned out either. Um, I think um, I think it was kind of frustrating all round, really, for for the both of them. So yeah, I, I think. Um, very much sort of walking off in opposite directions sort of thing. Um, it's the way I see it. Why don't we throw you, throw somebody in your way? Why don't we throw Helen in your way? You guys probably live close to each other in the poorer section of town, right? Yeah, that makes sense. Cool. So, uh, Helen, how, where does Jonathan find you? Um... Think of what would be in the poorer section of town that would be interesting. Okay. Well, what are you? Yeah. What are you doing there? I mean, besides uh, living. <laughs> um. God. Uh. My brain just shut down. Sorry. Uh, I think there's. It's it's not so much a park as like a vacant lot, um, which you know makes it a park, right? So there's some wooden benches scattered around, and really not much else like that. Okay, empty space, no building, wood ben wooden benches. It's a park. So I think I'm sitting on one of those benches. Uh, reading a book that like I did eventually get a copy of that I failed to steal from Louise. All right. Sounds like a contemplative spot, right? Yeah. And I think, um, um, Jonathan is, is, um, going to sort of stalk into the, uh, into the park and, you know, full broody Victorian mode. Um, um, he's, yeah, l clearly looks, um, said so frustrated. Uh, yes, de de definitely smoldering. Uh, <laughs> um, um, he probably does that thing of sort of not really paying attention until, um, uh, to um, Helen until he's got too close to not acknowledge her sort of thing. Um, and he'll, you know, um, take okay. up his cap. I cat. haven't acknowledged you either. I, like, you've been, you've been walking, you know, for a while and I've noticed you and I'm just, like, spying on you, basically. Yeah. Oh, uh, Miss Fisher, uh, how are you? Uh, I, I'm quite well. You, you don't look like you are. Oh, just nothing. Just a uh, running with Finch and his uh, crew. Uh, they're not. Oh. What kind of run in are we talking about here? Nah, nothing, nothing serious. I, uh, we just had a few words, you know. I, I, I didn't think they were, you know, physically dangerous to you, but, uh, yeah, words, they're, they are dangerous with words. I, I mean, It, it it was just one of those, th those things, you know. Yeah. Uh, well, 
you know, they're uh How long do you have here? You know, you, you put up with them for a, a few years and then you'll be you'll be off. I mean, it's it's not even it's I mean it Finch isn't a bad guy, you know. I just all these you know, these these types with the airs. I'm just not used to it, you know. Not my uh not my scene. Oh. I, I'm very familiar with that feeling. I uh I don't know how how you learn um you know how to how to not make it your scene but act as if it were if you well i guess you don't know you don't know either but i i guess i got to try and learn you know Unfortunately, necessary. I think it depends on. I, mean, I, guess, I guess it depends on where you where you want to end up and who you want to end up there with. But yeah, it's you have more options if you know it. Yeah. Hey, what uh, what you reading there anyway? Oh, this is a. Uh, um that is a good question what 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 was important enough to steal um or try to steal <laughs> i mean i i would say a novel or some kind of teaching manual but this is kingsport <laughs> right yeah it's it's um it's like a it's like a field guide almost but to like rumored and you know speculative uh you know ghosts and creatures that may or may not actually exist huh, that sounds uh interesting uh, yeah. uh it's you know it's pure purely fantasy yeah, I uh, I can't say as I've uh, read much of that sort of thing. Um, I think it's a good way to get a look into the the minds of people who would uh, you know who would believe these things. I'd say as I totally like bookmark something and you know put a little note beside it, like I've seen this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my. Uh... I guess the closest thing my uh, my uh, grandma tells all sorts uh, stories, you know, back from the old country and that. Yeah, everyone's everyone's grandmother, you know, brought brought their own uh, mystical creatures from their own countries. I think it's a, it's a universal trait of grandmothers. I wonder if they, I mean, they weren't grandmothers when they lived in the old country. But true, true. But you never see, you know, young young people. Well, no, that's not true. That's not true. I've heard, you know, young people telling about these things and believing it. So. Uh... You uh you hear any good ghost stories? Um uh, just the just the ones that are the same everywhere, right? The uh, the the mysterious lady by the side of the road looking for a ride and you know the the people stop the coach and pick her up and take her where she's going and then she 
you know, disappears and they ask someone later, you know, about her and describe her and she's been dead for 10 years. I've heard that so many variations of that one, but uh, uh, that's, that's the only one I've heard in any detail lately. Yeah, ghost ships, lots of ghost ships. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, I'd like to see a ghost ship sometime. That's uh, uh, supposed to be bad luck, though. You know, you see a ghost ship uh, means someone's going to die. That's, yeah. Hmm. I'd like to see a ghost ship without the without the bad luck part. I just, uh, I mean, you know, I, I see it for myself and see if uh, how convincing it is that it's a ghost and not just a ship in the fog. Do you believe in yeah. ghosts? Hmm? Do you believe in ghosts? I don't know. I mean, I don't think I believe in ghosts, but at the same time, when it comes to stuff like that, I'd uh, rather take my uh, take my chances and not uh, not make anyone angry. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's better better to be safe just in case, right? Yeah, exactly. So. Alice, you're through the looking glass and standing in front of this uh, elderly looking, not old, but young, not young, unhealthy lady who's just looking at you with a kind of prim expression. And sort of waiting for you to say more, since the last thing you said was that you were nobody, but also an emissary. Um, I was just gonna. That gaze is kind of scary, so <laughs> I was just trying to not meet her eyes, but failing. And uh, she's kind of like, I've been asked, Madam, to in entreat. With you on behalf of someone else. Entreat. Well, that's a very big word. You must be an educated girl. Uh, whose entreaty am I receiving? Um. They. They say they referred to us the master. Um, oh. Oh, him again. Well, what did the master want from me? Um, he has to see you before your time's passed. Why doesn't he just come? Um, I should have asked this before broadcast. Remind me, why couldn't he come? <laughs> he was very unclear about it. He just said okay. that he was not able to in his own will to come. Um, he was very unclear about it. You know, <laughs> only that. Well, if it's the same know. master, I'm not surprised. He was unclear. He was never clear about many things. I suppose as a poet, I should not consider that to be necessarily a character flaw, though. I prefer a little bit more directness. Yeah, he was he was unnecessarily vague. Um, he promised me something important. But truth be told, I was caught in the moment, and now I'm unsure if he's even able to fulfill that promise. Oh, he offered me something very important once, too. What did he offer you? A name of my own? That's mostly what he offered me. He offered me fame to let my name be known. Would it be okay to ask, ma'am, if what, who were you to him? I suppose you could call me his favorite. I wouldn't say protege. When, when these 
people find you. It's not that they can make you more than what you are, but they can help you have more luck. The master didn't make me a poet. I made myself a poet. Me and the bones of this country and 200 years of proud Puritanism in my family. The master would have given me more than I could have gone under myself. And all he asked in return was to be his favorite. Well, perhaps he would have asked for more eventually. They're very tricky, these creatures. They will ask services that you think are not important, but then it turns out that they had something else entirely in mind. And they can't lie. You can take that to heart. They must speak the truth to you. It, pardon me for saying so, but it sounds like you are arming m me against him. Well, you're in it now, aren't you, girl? You've done his bidding. You've done a, he's, you're done a service for him. Promises bind us. Well, what you agreed to, was it worth it at the end? I'm not sure. I mean, because I didn't get what I asked for. But by the time I found out everything, I didn't want to ask for it from him anymore. And so I never got it. So if you could see him one more time, would you ask for it? I would ask for nothing from the master. Uh, when, when she mentioned creatures, I was just like, hand uh, throbbed a bit where she got cut. And, and uh, she noticed that. And let's see, what was she, she going to say? She's like, then I would, I would like for you to be frank then, ma'am. Did, did I make a mistake? Trusting his words? No, he he'll honor any promise he gave you, though the way that he honors it is his own choosing. I fear more for you, mortal girl, because you have been brought into their machinations. And I am sure that the other ones will be angry at you. If he can't come here of his own will, it's probably they have something to do with it. Probably I have something to do with that. I long ago said that I no longer will leave my father's land, and I don't anymore. I suppose it doesn't matter much. I'm not long for this world. When she mentions mortal girl, Miles just kind of laughs at that. <laughs> I'm sorry, ma'am, but if only I were something as simple as a mortal girl. What's this now? If I, I've asked you to be frank, therefore I must be frank of my own accord. Mortality would be the one thing I want. A name of my own, not the one foisted upon me. Mortality is what you want. Girl, I I have buried or sat at the bedside of my of dying friends all my life. Is that really what you want? How many of my friends uh, have died young? Too many. Too many good friends lost to me. Uh, I was just like, um, I would, that, that experience, life, I had been denied that. Man, I've not had a thimble of life that was not someone else's. I am not of this earth, um, but some other, no, no, God. someone who has someone else's face, someone else's name, and someone else's life. When you asked me who I was, I said no one, nobody. But that's who I want to be. Not really who I am. Hmm. 
you know, you could, if you wanted to learn about life, you could just read poems. It's probably a more practical way. Or the Bible. People say it does you good. Have you tried those two, girl? <laughs> no, I thought to, to leap for the most dramatic option. Hmm. Well, I can't say that I'm unfamiliar with drama in my own life. I don't have visitors anymore. I make Vinny take them away. Sometimes I'll talk to someone on the other side of the door. They think that's strange. I don't think it that strange. Not really. I'm worn out of people. You say you're not a person, but you look like one. A great many things can be made to look like what they're not. Oh, that's fair. I was going to say, girl, when you said that you hadn't lived any life of your own, that seems to be more endemic to being a woman than some unearthly creature. The funny thing is, I had to be told that. And if I were of this earth, I would know that simply by living. Had my brother been one-tenth the poet I was, his name would be famous all up and down this valley. And here I am twice or three times the poet of anyone I've ever met. And my name will die with me, it seems. Uh, I was going to step forward and she's kind of like hold uh, this old poet's hand and she says but there and at least let me have your name so that if nothing else, you would die. As in, uh, not, not to literally give her your name, but like, uh, may, I, may I at least know your name. So Surely, that you, unheralded, unheralded. Surely you must know what house you're in. Are, or are you not from her? Are you not from here? I suppose the master has his ways. <laughs> uh, I smiled that and it's like, as you say, his words were vague. Unfortunately, someone with no life makes for a poor emissary, I suppose. Well, you are in the house of the Honorable Edward Dickinson at one, at one time, a congressman and member of the Massachusetts State Legislature, chancellor of the university, and I'm his daughter, Emily. I suppose you, I would welcome you had you come through the front door, but had you come through the front door, I probably wouldn't talk to you. It's strange that Vinny hasn't woken up. No, no, I was, I was, I was brought here to a looking glass, if you would believe that. I would believe it. It's, uh, I've seen miracles in my time. I scoff at them, though. If you would permit me to ask uh, once more, Miss Dickinson, um, you say you do not care for visitors. If you would not um, meet with the master, would you at least allow myself to meet with you once more? Well, I don't like to have visitors, and yet you came, so I suppose if you want to come, you can, I can't stop you. But I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't want to impose. Well, come later next time, and I'll show you what I do here when I'm not writing or in pain. That would, that would be nice. Miss Higginson. Um, All right. Well, girl, I am tired. If you if you to call my name, please call me Alice. For now. Your name's Alice, and you came through a looking glass. And she's she's not read that book, so the the metaphor fails. The the, the reference sails over her head, <laughs> and she's I, like, "Yes, and." A master does love his little ironies, I suppose. Well, girl, I suggest you step back through the mirror however you come. 
And uh, I suppose I'll see you the, the next time you arrive. Hopefully it won't be too late. And with that, she slowly gets up in a lot of pain, um, picks up her sewing kit and some sheets of paper that she's written on, and starts to walk slowly towards the staircase. Yeah, I'm going to take that as a win. <laughs> as some sort of win, I just think so that I don't know. <laughs> she said I can go back. Yeah. So I'm kind of like, I'm kind of like, okay. Just, just like, okay, yeah, that's us done. And then I realized Shiban's not with me. <laughs> it's like, oh shit, did I leave her at, back at the house? I'm going to go back to the looking glass, I guess. Cool. So, um, what I think is we should definitely move the time frame up a little bit. Let's check in with Finch. And uh, so what happens in the next couple days, maybe? I think that um, Finch probably works to try to lure uh, probably Alan into his little flock. I think that's probably what it is. Uh, would love to see his circle expanding. So I think that's what that's what his primary goal is. Uh, I think that they probably have had like a tense silence between he and Jonathan uh, as uh, he continues to position himself as like this exclusive clique that you know he offered to be a part of, but you know, someone said no. And then uh, I think that the, the mystery of Alice confuses him more though. I think that's starting to catch his curiosity because Alice came back again, slightly changed by something. Cool. Do we want to do that as a scene? Like, do you confront Alice or does Alice confront Finch or does this just happen accidentally? Maybe they like run into some each other somewhere, like away from my flock. Yeah. I mean, after that, I don't think, I think Alice is thinking after that meeting is like, oh, look, I'm beyond petty drama. I don't need this. Uh, so accidental works out for that. So uh, maybe they are at, I don't know, maybe it's in the hallway at the school, like uh, between courses or something like that. OK, uh, I think Alice, um, as usual, is kind of like head down. She, she, she's got some books under her arm, and she's not paying attention. And. She bumps into you, but this is not a meet cute in any way whatsoever because it's, it's, it's you and her. Definitely not. It's, it's like a meet ugly. We like scout with each other a little bit. Um, I think that at that point it says, uh, Finch probably says something along the lines of, I know they seem to have taken your personality, but it seems they've also taken your sense of awareness as well. Uh, yeah, as you notice, he was like, oh, shit, it's, it's that guy. And she, she's just like, she's just like, is what, this again, F Finch, look, why with the war with the wor of the words again, this, is that all you've got? Uh, Finch actually probably like closes the distance and then like, menaces a little bit, but then just like starts to take the books from like the stack that you're carrying. Uh, because a gentleman never lets a woman carry books when he could be assisting her. And uh, like smiles down at you and says, uh, simply put, I like strong people. And the Alice that I knew was strong. I don't get the same sense from whatever you are. Um, Alice is... And just like, I don't know what Alice you knew, but the, but what what's true now is that whoever that Alice was, they're gone. Okay, and I'm the only one left here, and I'm sorry, I'm not that one. But you jumping down my throat is not going to change that. And she is like surprised by your candor, actually. And then kind of smiles at you a little bit and says, 
Now that's more interesting. Now that's something that I could potentially see some possibility in. First of all, don't apologize. It's unbecoming. Uh, okay. She's confused by this. <laughs> so, uh, Finch actually kind of like, you know, like takes a couple more of the books from the stack and then uh, just says, you may not be my Alice, but you know, now that you've started to show some sort of backbone, I think you could be pretty interesting. Is that a good thing? I mean, it's better than being boring. There's no worse sin in the world than being boring. Is that, is that why, um, uh, she's trying to find the words. Is that why Alice left? Because she found you boring? Oh, on the contrary. Alice found me fascinating, and I her. She just happened to find that other girl a little bit more fascinating. Ooh, uh, Alice, this Alice wants to say something, but no, she's, she, she's not there yet. <laughs> and, uh, oh, she says, well, if you say so. Ah. But let's not talk about my Alice anymore. Now I want to know. It. <laughs> well, now we're talking about this Alice. What does this Alice want? I, I what? Do, hmm, I'm, I'm not sure if I should tell you that, Finch, because, well, I don't know what you do if you know what I want. Other Alice, I know that we've gotten off on the wrong foot, but I just want you to know that I can be incredibly helpful to you. I am only here to help other people shine brighter. What do you get out of that in return? Simply the satisfaction of a job well done and knowing how much that my help is meant to someone and how much they appreciate me. Oh my God, I want to punch him right now. <laughs> um, no, no, I'm not gonna punch him. No, I just move for that. But like, oh, I mean, me, me, Leandro is want to punch him, but Alice is. It's just like, it's, I prefer that to you jumping down my throat, I guess. So, yeah, and what Finch is trying to do right now is he's kind of like putting on the charm because he wants to convince Alice that uh, he can help her get what she wants and maybe make her feel a little special too. So that's what's going on here. Oh, my like, God. So, a little special yeah. or a little a little turned on <laughs> i mean yeah i think we're, we're kind of going there because i don't know that finch knows any other way to sell it so um i also we don't have the role for the party yet so oh yeah my bad sorry uh it's our old friend duly wise kitten yeah, well, yeah. So, my guys are still here. All right, so my hot is a minus one, but I'm still going to roll the turn you on. Uh, and it's an eight. <laughs> Ooh. Let me go ahead and move. Um, well, you have enough strings on me, I guess. Um, okay, so I'm used to Finch being, uh, yeah, you're not my, you're not my Alice. You're, you're fraud. You're phony. Um, so this is weird. So, um, yeah, I think I am going to be embarrassed and just, and just like, um, what was the last thing you said again? Just to refresh my mind. Uh, it was something along the lines of, um, oh yeah, uh, you asked what do I get out of helping people feel special and I say, yeah. um, just the, the feeling of knowing I've helped them achieve something greater than themselves and, that they'll appreciate. I think, yeah, <laughs> I can get embarrassed and be like, uh, <laughs> uh, I didn't know you were such an altruist, Finch. Um, um, how many people have you helped uh, shine bright, I guess? Uh, Finch smiles a little bit more and like 
steps a little bit closer and it's just like, oh, I only help people who I think could shine brighter than all the rest. I'm very discerning and I only want the brightest diamonds. Do you think I can shine brighter than your Alice? I think given the right time and the right direction, you could shine brighter than any Alice. I think she takes her books off you again and and she's like I'll, I'll I'll think about it okay just it it it's it's I'll, I'll think about it she's saying yes that's that's what she means okay. <laughs> <laughs> she, she kind of just walks off head down again very confused Finch just walks watches as you walk away and like like you see his smile like slowly slip from his face into like a like this like pouty scowl and it's just like like he smirks like evilly into the camera and then turns away. Okay, that's fantastic. Um, so I'd love to see Jonathan and Helen again. Where would you guys? Do you guys meet at all? Was that a chance occurrence, or do you, or is it because you live in the same neighborhood you intersect more often? Uh, I think it's I think it's just that we we intersect pretty often. We, we maybe both tend to uh, go to the same places, like even even for somebody from that neighborhood, but like we don't go together. Um, if that makes sense. Yeah, totally. Is the park yeah, a place you hang out a lot, or? Um, yeah, I think it's. I think that's where I study. Okay. Because otherwise, I would get in this long, drawn-out, ridiculous arguments with my dad. What about is that the same for you, Jonathan? Or yeah, I, I think so. Um, you know, I think there's probably not a lot of um, space back at home. Um, so yeah, I think he does. You know, either come here or the sort of local library or wherever when he, he needs to work. Cool. Uh, so uh, you guys are, are you, you've you just reached the park. Uh, probably one of you was there a little earlier. I'm guessing maybe Helen, since I'm pretty sure Jonathan has more chores. Um, and Jonathan, just as you arrive and you see Helen probably struggling to put away that book <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when an incredibly elegant and well-appointed coach pulls up to the park with a coachman on the on the boot and uh the door and uh and he jumps down and uh looks at the two of you and looks inside the coach like he's asking a question and then looks back and says, pardon me, uh, my mistress would like to talk with you. If you don't mind, she would happily drive you any place you need to go. Oops. Sorry, that froze a bit there for me. I, uh... Oh, sure. Sorry. <laughs> uh, so, yes, the coachman asks... Uh, is my mistress would uh, like to speak with you and she would be happy to drive you anywhere that you wish to go. Um, I don't think we can turn that down, can we? Yeah, uh, who, who is your uh, mistress? If you don't she, mind me asking. She would prefer to make the introductions herself. Then, sure, I guess. Oh, monster hearts. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Uh, so he he opens the coach door, drops down the stairs. Uh, you guys clamber in, and sitting on, on the back bench, wearing an elegant uh, red dress of, you know, of burgundy velvet, holding a, a little lorgnette with red colored uh lenses in there and a fan that has uh that has a fig it's in red and black with a figure of a white rabbit running 
woven across the frieze. She looks at me and says, well, 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 well. You I want to talk to, pointing at Jonathan. You are a happy coincidence. Fisher? And strange. Are you sure you're, there's no Dunwich blood in you? Could be. Hmm. <laughs> well, just, uh, how did you, uh, how did you gain your powers, girl? It's not by blood. Um, so out of character, actually, I didn't fill that in for yeah, no, because I wasn't sure like how to fit it in with the you know any established uh, story. Um, we could totally just wing it. I'm okay with that. <laughs> Went for a walk one day. Ran into a woman in the woods who told me that I had uh, more uncanny abilities than the average person and offered to teach me and I, you know, of course, I wanted to find out what she meant. I wonder if it was one of them spiteful Greenwood girls. There's still one or two of them alive. Well. She never said her name. That's smart. Never say your name never to asked. people. That's also smart. <laughs> if you want to know somebody's real name, you have to work it out yourself. It's more fun and it's more reliable, too. People will lie about their true name. Well, mortals will. Well, well, well. And Jonathan Brody. I may be a queen of hearts, but I can feel that yours is breaking my poor boy. My poor boy. I, uh, I don't know what you mean, ma'am. Sure you don't. Brody... Brody, you can't lie to me. I'll know. Do you think there's any secrets in that box of a heart of yours that I haven't unlocked? Of course not. Here we can talk frankly. Why, your friend here is admitted as much as, as much admitted that she's a witch. And as for you, your heart is broken and you are love struck and you don't know how to deal with this turn of events for you are in love with a cruel man he's not cruel he's just <laughs> aloof well, aloof is what people call cruelty when it's polite so my dear children my dear dear children it seems that, once again, Kingsport has decided to be a battleground. So I'm enlisting soldiers. I mean, not actual soldiers. Good heavens, no. You, you have to use one of those guns. They're noisy and smelly and covered in oil. They're not a civilized weapon at all. I mean, I don't, I don't have much truck with steel or iron in the first place, but... Yes, I need you to help me uh, with a problem. It's a mortal problem, though there are some beings that are not mortal involved. In return, I can give you whatever you want. Well, almost whatever you want. Speak your heart's desire to me, my children, and I shall make it go true. But only if you accomplish my task. It's not a very difficult task. What is it? There is a person I think known to you. Her name is Alice McBride. Yep, I uh, know her. 
Well, Alice has decided to take the wrong side in this conflict, and she has, in fact, done a bad thing. And to be fair, she was put up to it, and there will be a reckoning in that order, too, for trying to breach the rules that I have laid down, for trying to crush the fences that I have put up with good reason. One does not spurn me. One does not say no to her majesty. And one does not renege on a favorite when their fate has been decided. But that's old history. <laughs> it's before your time, children. I need you to stop Alice McBride from continuing to visit someone. How you do that, I leave to you. Mortal problems generally have mortal solutions. In return, I will reward you. For I can know your heart's desire, and I can give it to you. That's, that's my gift. That's my power. And a promise made to me will be honored. Well, from what you just said, it sounds like uh, we don't exactly have much choice in the matter anyway. That, my dear, is complicated. For you have that mortal gift of freedom of choice. Always seemed a rather pointless thing to me, but you have it. Therefore, I cannot coerce you to be my agent. You have to choose it. I'm allowed to trick you. I suppose honesty demands I say at least that much. But I can't break a promise that I make to you. Who is it that we're supposed to stop her from visiting? Oh, that's complicated. Why would she listen to either of us? I didn't, I didn't necessarily say that you should talk to her about it. I said you should stop her. Surely. And she leans in very close to you, <laughs> Helen. And, and this, is a, this is a person who drips charisma off of her. She is incredibly... I mean, the only word is enchanting. Surely you have some capability. Surely you have perhaps used your hexes on people before? Naughty girl. That's not very nice. But fortunately, I don't need nice people. I don't like nice people. I don't deal with nice people. I'm nice enough. And she leans back. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think like as she leans back, both like the the like tongue tiedness um and the like immediate desire to make whatever promise she wants both kind of go away at the same time. Um so uh I... You say you can you can see what we want most. Well, that's the problem with mortals. You don't often know your own heart and you're confused. That's why I've learned to ask people to tell me what they want. And then I can give it to them. When I used to just give people what they really wanted and then they didn't seem to like it that much. Water under the bridge. Um, I'm not supposed to tell people my name, but I'm supposed to tell you 
the thing I most want. Oh, of course. A name has power. Why I can do thirty <laughs> I could do thirty things before breakfast with a name. Good heavens. I'd rather just give you my name. Oh. But I well I I'm I happy will. to make that bargain. <laughs> <laughs> Well, what about you, dear Jonathan? Surely there's something lurking in that heart of yours. Uh, would you care for a filter of love? Would you care to make yourself more charming? A suit of clothes? Eh, there are many options here. Would you like to be rich? I don't know. Like, I've always said if a deal looks too good to be true, it probably is. So I'll 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 talk to Alice, see if I can't get her to stop doing what she's doing. I can't promise I'll succeed, but hey, if I do, then maybe we can talk. Well, if you don't want to name your price, then don't be disappointed if I can't end up making it. But I'll take that as an agreement. I'll, t I'll hold you to that. I don't ask people to swear anymore. It doesn't mean anything. That was a hard lesson. I used to make people swear by all sorts of things, but then they started to swear by the Christian God, and it was ridiculous. Like they thought that would do anything. Oh, well. Well, children, where would you like to go? I will be happy to take you anywhere. Have, have you seen Paris in the spring? How about London in the winter? Rome in summer? Actually, no one goes to Rome in the summer. Well... What are many possibilities? I just kind of look at uh, Jonathan like, I don't know. Do you have any ideas? Because, you know, the, the, the chance like this doesn't come along very often. Um, and, uh, you know, I haven't, you know, I haven't, I haven't made the promise because I don't know what I really want. And it like, just, that just sort of struck me as like, uh, oh, wait. So, so I think at the same time, I'm trying to like figure that out and also like where we should go. And uh, yeah, just kind of look at, look at Jonathan, like maybe you, you be decisive. Um. I mean, Paris sounds nice, but uh, might be a little tricky getting back. So it's probably best you just uh, maybe drop us off at the library. Well, knowledge is power. That's definitely true. All right, children, I'll drop you off at the library. Would you care for a dainty? She holds out a, a box of Turkish delight for you. <laughs> I totally take one. <laughs> oh, Lord, you should really read that book more carefully. Yeah, yeah, you know, haven't gotten to that chapter yet. Uh, okay, cool. Uh, this seems like a wonderful time to take a break and have everyone consider what they, what horrible <laughs> things they've done with their lives. <laughs> Uh, so uh, why don't we take five minutes and uh, figure that all out. I'll see you shortly. So is the reveal okay for you, Landra? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't expect that. I was, I, was I, I did thought it was some sort of Kingsport alumni, but then left, definitely left field. I do feel bad that like I wish I had a more literary background so I'd actually read any of Dickinson works. I. 
I, I thought I did, but then I realized later on that I thought I had read all these like great works of literature, like Dickens and whatnot. Turns out I'd read some pocket books or just basically cliff notes of them. So I know what happens, but not actually read the material. I need to rectify that someday. Oh, yeah, there's, it's easy to find Emily Dickinson poems on the internet. It's harder sometimes to understand them, though they're all pretty good. She's one of my favorite poets. I would have just really laughed if you'd like tried to like been like I'm just gonna walk home and then like realize that you were in Amherst and that's yes. like 24 hours away. <laughs> yeah, it's clearly the other side of the state almost. I guess about halfway across the state. Uh, yep, yeah. cool. So during that last thing, I happened to look at my stats and noticed that my cold was negative one. <laughs> I go, oh, okay. <laughs> Let me play to that. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, wow, yeah. Uh, you're one of them dark witches. Yeah, dark oh. and hot, but not cold. <laughs> Interesting. I don't think I've seen too many hot witches, so that's that's cool. I was a very hot witch. <laughs> Fair, fair. How did I forget that? Holy cow! Yeah, I was, you, also, I was also gonna laugh because you almost picked the exact same moves that I had picked in the previous game. Like, if you had taken um, like watching and illusions, it would have been like like the exact same move list. I'm glad you took withering though. That's a lot of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's horrible, horrible, horrible. Okay. Um. So wow, that just happened. <laughs> what are people's plans now? Um, I, I mean, I think I'm gonna talk to Alice at some point. Um, <laughs> I think. Uh, oh, go on, go on, Daryl. I was just gonna say, I think I'll be decidedly standing in between the others and Alice because <laughs> I brought her into my fold. Well, not quite. I mean, we still have to, you know, like make it official. You know, that there's a ritual involved. Yeah. The ritual is sex. <laughs> <laughs> um, what about you, Jonathan? Yeah, um, I think I am also, yeah, wanting to speak to Alice um, about this whole situation. Um, the other thing I want to do more generally is I would like to uh, speak to Magnus as well. But um, that's uh, less pressing. You want to talk to Magnus, huh? I actually, now my curiosity is piqued. So why don't we do that? Where, where do you find Magnus? Um. So I think it will be at school, um, because I don't really see us running into each other outside of school, particularly. Yeah, that's fair. Um, and I think um, we'll just go for for the, the one of the old standbys and say in the bathroom, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm just thinking about what it would look like in 86. Yeah, okay, 86 is probably okay. Uh, I mean, there's certainly a washroom where you would wash up, so that that works. All right, cool. Uh, yeah, so you, you find Magnus there staring into a mirror, looking at his beard, just pondering if you should trim it or not. Hey, uh, Hi, I um, just wanted to say uh, about the other day at the church. I'm I'm sorry if uh, I uh, got into anything with you and uh, you and Greenwood there. Well, what me, between me and Greenwood? No, no, that that's not possible. Don't be ridiculous. Uh, Brody, just, just, honestly, Brody, what is it that you're trying to do? I mean, uh, 
Look, old man, I'm sure you're you're a fine spirited lad, but you're simply not the right set to spend any time with someone like Finch Greenwood or or me. Yeah, well, like I said, I'm I'm sorry if uh If I caused you any uh, problems there, I'll uh, try not to get in your way again. Well, uh, if you'd caused me a problem, old man, I would have settled that problem with you directly. I've got no... Uh, I've got no doubt about it, uh, Pi. You're a uh, strapping... Uh, powerful man um i'm gonna kind of get a little bit closer to him i uh i don't doubt you could do uh anything with me you wanted it's funny for uh it's uh kind of cute you know The way uh, you are around uh, Greenwood. Uh, as like I said, you're a big guy. You don't seem like the type to uh, take much, uh, you know, pushing around. But you follow him around like a little puppy after its uh, master. What is it you're trying to do here, Brody? Finch and I are old friends. We bonded together in a way that only people that set could. Uh, I have no problem being the Patroclus to an Achilles. That's, uh... I'm uh, glad you think so highly, uh, Greenwood. He's, a uh... A fine fella. He is. He's a fine fella. Now that said, uh, I don't always like the way he works, but see, uh, he wants to bring you into our little society, but you know, the thing is, old man, I don't fuck the help. That's, uh... That's, uh, one way of looking at it, I guess. But, uh... I have no intention of being your servant anyway, so. Well, finally, I thought I, I didn't, I didn't think I could get a rise out of you. My goodness, Pi. My goodness there, Brody. No wonder you're so, you're mobbed around like a lovesick schoolgirl. A real man wouldn't have taken what I said to him like that. But then again. And he just turns back to the mirror, <laughs> looks, looking at his beard. If I were going to kick your ass, I'd have done it already. I, uh... I, uh, got no, um... I got no beef with you. Well, if wishes for horses, beggars would ride. I'm sure you know about that one. Yeah, um, I think I'm going to just leave at that point. 
Oh dear. Okay. <laughs> well, that happened too. I know. Uh, wow. I need a second to stop being such a brutal jerk. Um, that was savage. I think <laughs> <I'm lost. laughs> God. Sorry about that. I, feel bad now. I am um, teaching them well, apparently. Uh, okay. What do we want to do next? <laughs> Do we want to go ask Alice? I think she'll know. Ah, oh, so much pressure on me. Everyone wants to talk to me. It's so weird. Who do I want to talk to? You're the bell of the ball, Alice. I know. It's so, it's so much. Um, I think after you know talking to Finch, she's just well. She could run into Helen. I think she's. I think she's just gonna be after the after the school day. She's gonna head home first. Um, she wants to talk to her dear sister Eliza and ask her ask her some things. Um, I think Finch, do you would you do you invite me to your place? Of course I do. <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah. I think yeah that invitation stand. Maybe you 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 had kept the book from me and I had to go find you again. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm so I'm gonna head home first for that. Okay. Um I could definitely run into Helen on the way home or on the way to Finch, whichever one. Uh yeah. I like that ambush idea. Let's do that. Helen, you're an ambusher. I don't I'm sorry, I keep framing it that way. No, no, I think it's uh um, I, I think that's about accurate. Um, yeah, you know, like I, I, I see her long before I say hello. Um, like I come up, you know, when I'm like coming up right beside her, uh, cause I've been following her for, you know, a while. Um, <laughs> Alice. Oh. Oh, hello, um, Helen. Yes. Um, hi. Something wrong? No, no, no. It's just she had to think about. She had to think. Try to remember your name. Uh -huh. but she's not gonna say it out loud. <laughs> right. Yes. <laughs> uh, it's like no, no, nothing wrong. Um, what can I, what can I do for you? You, you asked for me, or you just want to say hi? Um, did you, do you know a very strange woman who wears a red dress and I like to describe her just like, just straight out. <laughs> just looking at you like, what? <laughs> and it's like, no, I'm, I'm not aware of any woman of this sort. Um. I'm I'm sorry. Uh, I, I, I apologize, Helen, but that's um that's a strange question to ask of me. Um, what's what's wrong? Well, uh, she she knew she asked about you. Or she 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 knows you. I I. But uh, a, a lot of people know about Alice McBride, I guess. Um, <laughs> did what did she want from me? She wanted you to stop visiting someone but then she didn't tell me who it was you were supposed to stop visiting it was incredibly uh you know I... vague and unclear yes yes both of those things oh dear those sorts um do you know what she was talking about i i have an inkling but people like them they they like being vague and unclear, I think they get a rise out of it. People like there's more than one of her. Oh, oh! She realized she said that. Oops. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think she realized. I was like, mm, maybe. <laughs> uh, 
Look, look, look. Oh, Who God. is it you're not supposed to visit? I just... She, she seems... I wouldn't, I wouldn't say harmless. No, she's, she's, she's someone of incredible wit and intellect who's, who's passed, you know, passed over for other sorts. She, I don't think... I wouldn't know why she... It's, it's nobody... No, 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 no. She should be more important. She's she's stuck in the loop now. She's very confused. Like, no, she's Helen. I'm. I'm sorry, but I don't know who this woman is that's telling you to be. A, I guess to carry her words to me. But I'm going to need more than vague and unclear uh, mutterings to stop what I'm doing. Um. Who, who is this person? She sounds. Uh, she sounds interesting. Oh, she's one of the most interesting and most well-read, and just uh, she has so much literary knowledge just in her pinky, compared to all the so-called po poet laureates of the world. It's she. But Helen, I'm I'm sorry, Helen, but I just can't say. It's I would I would not want to. I would I would not want to just start spreading that I have access to her. It's not. It's yes. this is very important to me, Helen. Um. Oh, all right. I. She sounds like someone my. Someone my dad would know or or want to know i i if you're asking me if i could take your dad to her i don't think that no, would be why no, i'm not i'm not asking that i i just want to uh i, Are you I okay don't know what what do you want i i i want i want to know what i want I want to know what. <laughs> um, I was just gonna give you a hug. Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah. Um. Uh, yeah, what she do gives you a hug. <laughs> um, she 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 breaks the hug and she's just looking at you as kind of like, as kind of like a contrast to how she's feeling, and she smiles, and it's kind of like. I don't know if I should say hell, but I know exactly what I want. And let me tell you, it's once you figure that out, it's a, it's a freeing experience. It's what, what is it? <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, how this is. I'm I'm I keep I keep apologizing. I'm sorry, but uh, it, it's it's all right. <laughs> I wouldn't tell her what I wanted either. The 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 lady at the fancy coach and the mm. red dress. She wanted to know. I, I'm sorry. I just asked you the thing I wouldn't tell her. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think <laughs>, laughs at that. It's just oh, this is all awkward. <laughs> and well, at least I don't have to ask your name. Or no, I, do I you don't you don't need to. Everyone knows my name, so to speak. So, so to speak. Uh, oh, your name's not Alice, or it's not... oh. Why does she keep do? Why does Alice keep doing this? Um, <laughs> she read that again. And it's just like, but she's not shocked. It's more like oh, she really wants to say it, but. You know, it's not something you say to people. It's just kind of like, oh, Helen, I shouldn't tell. I would like to, but sometimes I have to keep I mean, your own I won't, I won't tell the... Well, no, she seems to know your name already. Uh... How, how could she? That's the funny thing. She, if I'm, if I'm right about what I know of myself, she wouldn't have any reason to know my name. Because I don't have one. You don't have. 
Is that true? Yes. How, how do you not have a name? It's it's complicated. I Helen, I've already no told you. No one ever named you. Uh, well, I guess I was given a name, but it was a name that already. Hmm. And she kind of catches just herself. Choose your own then. Just just pick a name you want. If it's not. If that's not your real name, I don't know if you're speaking, I don't know if you're you're being literal or figurative, but either way, just pick a new name. If if you want one. Well, I do, but that's what I... Here, I'll pick a name for you. I like take out the book <laughs> out of my bag. <laughs> I'm like thumbing through it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very confused. <laughs> Helen, Helen, um, this is this is all very nice, but look, I'm. This is all very lovely and very welcome, and I appreciate that you care. But look, you just came out to me out of nowhere, and and it feels like it feels like you already you know most of my life story, and I'm. I feel like that shouldn't be. You know? Uh, I mean, I guess. Uh, don't I? I mean, well, I guess everyone has their secrets, but. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, look, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry if I'm, if I'm being untoward to you. It's just, with the past couple of weeks, I I kind of trained myself to see if what people really want of me, you know. Um, see, maybe you could tell me that. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Let's let's flip this. Helen, what do you want? I I said I don't. So, no the. There must, well, there must be something uh, like there must be a last me and i don't i don't know i i want a lot of things but i don't know there's not one big important there's an, thing there's not any lack that's burning a hole in your heart no there's I mean, a lot of a lot of little things i guess but that you know maybe i wish could be a little bit different but it's well then no, maybe you can start no there, one just... thing that i don't I get the idea well, that people have. I think most people That's want that because it's simpler, you know? Maybe maybe, maybe start small. What's maybe one thing you really want? Um, no, I wouldn't, Helen, I wouldn't wish anyone on my place. There's a difference between wanting something and having it, you know? You're right. You're right about that. Yeah, it's good. It's good that I don't. I don't have any one big want. Uh, yes, it's it sounds like with this lady, you've only just slipped through her grasp for your lack of want. I guess. I guess. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. What should I tell her? Um. Tell her. See, I, I wouldn't. I don't want her wrath upon you. Um, I look like she didn't say anything bad would happen if I didn't. She said something. She would give me what I wanted if I did, but that's different. What's True. bad happens? She won't give me what I want, and I don't want anything. So <laughs> we're good, right? Well, well, you're very lucky then. <laughs> so, so you just able to slip through. That's. I'm actually envious of that. You know, and not, not well. I guess in some way it would be nice to trade places, but we are where we are. That's true. So, uh, what? What? But, what should I? Um. Do you want to talk to her? I guess I didn't. Do, do you... I've. That would be interesting, but I've a lot on my plate at the moment. I'm supposed to meet with people 
suddenly um, people take interest in me. I don't I don't know why. Um, but look, Helen, I'm I'm sorry if this didn't go as you thought, but she kind of she kind of like gives you another sudden hug as if like. She's not really sure. I mean, I mentioned in the last session. She tried to flirt with Siobhan by talking about the the <laughs> talking about uh, very existentialist topics. <laughs> I'm hugging that, and like, I'm 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 sorry. I'm sorry. Just so much doubt. If there's anything I could do, yeah. To... Um, I. You go. I, I have. I, you're you're in a hurry. Um, you should. I should let you go. Um, and then Alice reads the hug and she's like, "Well, if I say one more, th I, I, I'll, I'll try to give a bit of advice. Don't 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 try and follow it. I don't mind, but it's something to give. If you don't have to have one big hole in your heart. In fact, it's probably prefer let prefer to not have that. Just." Start small, you know? It's like, like maybe you want a cup of tea or that book uh, that's burning a hole in your pocket and you should read it. Just start out with those and maybe you find what you really want. Um, yeah, after this, I don't know. Now that now you have me thinking, maybe it's best not to have something. So, so does does this ever actually work? Do you turn people on by talking about existential life <laughs> issues? Yes, I saw, because so here's, because this, oh, it sure seems like you're working your way that direction. Um, yeah. I mean, if you if you want to roll to turn me on, go for it. Uh, because <laughs> either either hugging her or talking like this could work. <laughs> um, see, uh, see, Alice wouldn't ha wouldn't know how to actually flirt with people. She's she's very She's like, I don't think you have to be good at it. <laughs> move, move is not flirt with someone. The move okay, is right. someone on. I don't know. Does 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 Helen find affection? Um, I think so. I think I think that would like. Okay, well it's a nine, so <laughs> both on your court. Okay. Um. Where is mine? Okay. Let's see. Uh. So, so I'm still yeah uh, figuring out this character, but I think like um, I think I give myself to you would be my normal reaction here, but like at the same time, uh, you're clearly like trying to like go, but um. Nah, what, the, what I give myself to you. <laughs> what does that look like? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, <laughs> oh god, that's so Oh come on. This is my favorite this is my favorite of all the sex moves. Right. I have never used <laughs> Oh you, all right. Yeah, oh no, you have to get writing paper. Uh you have to get writing material for Yeah, well I came prepared. So All right. <laughs> just in case. Okay, I think what this is gonna look is that um uh, the hug stays on for just just that second too long. Uh -huh. And and I was kinda like, let's go. Very flustered. And <laughs> she's kinda like I'm I'm not in a hurry. Um do you want to come home with me? <laughs> you know, sure. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna assume no one is no one else is home. <laughs> Maybe Eliza's there, but uh, her uh, Alice's mom. I I think I mentioned she is kind of like. Oh, <laughs> she's one of the heads for uh, she's one of the advocates for the local temperance union who is all like you know young people shouldn't drink or or get into wild activities 
I, I think that like this is this is one of Helen's parents' attitudes that she has totally like um embraced. Like, okay, cool, yeah. <laughs> Free love. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, so which one goes off? Which which one sex move goes off first? Um, let's see, what are uh, what are our respective sex moves? Um, um yours is simpler. I gain as I gain a token, right? Or Ooh. Yeah, I can take a synthetic token. You know about it, though. You don't have to steal this one. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think I'll give you, I'll give you another one. Um, ooh, I think I'll give you a book. Uh, I'll figure out what that book is. Later. Is this a book of yours or a book that like belong to the other Alice that you have never I, like opened I, before? Oh no, though no, this is this one. This one is mine. I think this one I got very recently it's almost like a hint as to who i was talking to but ah, okay awesome yes <laughs> i love it and okay so the the hollow sex move is it's a bit it's a bit more prices right um secretly when you have sex down. with someone both players secretly write down whether the sex was confusing or soothing for their character to reveal the same answer both characters mark experience okay so all right uh Cue the music, I guess, or is that too much work, Kat? <laughs> well, I mean, so I just both type it in the chat and I said at the same time, or uh, I'm gonna write it down anyway, just so I can feel okay. as though I so okay. <laughs> Listen, I'll hold it up and it'll be backwards. Um, yeah, oh, shit. Well, it would be what I need to. <laughs> ah, okay, this pencil is betraying me. <laughs> Okay, hold on. There we go. Uh, the, the music is going to keep on playing and playing. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's supposed to be the dating game, not the Jeopardy theme. Uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right, okay. 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 All right. All right. Ready? All right. Yes. Okay, cool. Three, two, one. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't okay, know. I, can I, is, is it can't really see. Right. Yeah, I can't see it either. I'll, I'll just put it in the chat. Yeah, okay. <laughs> All right, so that was an anti climax. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah. you can't actually read it on this thing. <laughs> yeah, no, I wrote Aww. down soothing, so. <laughs> Same. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's good. That's sweet. Uh, cool. Just two flustered girls who needed each other, apparently. <laughs> apparently, yes. I think. <laughs> yeah, I think. I think uh, not. Not during or immediately after, but when you're maybe both sitting in the sitting room, perhaps having asked uh, asked Joni the maid to get you some something cool to drink. Eliza <laughs> comes home with her big temperance union sash. Takes yeah. one look at the two of you. Goes, <sighs> no. <laughs> should, should we have should we have gone back to your parents' place? <laughs> They'd be home. Um... Would that, have, would that have stopped anything? Uh, you know, I don't necessarily. <laughs> I don't think they're, well, I, so they might be that bohemian, but I, I'm i not, I Fair. guess. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, cool. So uh, is it time for the adventures of Finch and Alice? I mean, I feel like I got blown off, so <laughs> I might need to like find something else to fill my social calendar. Well, there's there's so many options. There's Brody, and there's Magnus. There's uh, Joy. So yeah, I think I would like to have like uh, a sit down with like Jonathan and Joy, like, and just see what that dynamic looks like. Oh my goodness. Uh, so what we know about Joy, she is your right-hand lady. She wants to recruit Alice. She's biracial. I assume that she's probably like the much more diplomatic of the group. Like that's like the, the like the reason I have her on hand is like she's she's so good at like navigating the waters, I think. And that's probably her thing because she's does it all her life. So Yeah, let me throw a I'll throw a little curveball. Uh, her family, uh, one part of her family is from uh, Martinique. 
Yeah, Martin Meek. We'll go with Martin Meek. I like going to that well. Uh, cool. Uh, okay. So where does this happen? Do you guys meet at a tea shop? In the, we we now know that Kingsport has tea shops. <laughs> <laughs> I was imagining it in the Finch family house parlor. So. Uh, which parlor? The good parlor or the regular parlor? <laughs> oh, the good parlor, of course. Oh my goodness, they opened it up for these kids? Wow, that's <laughs> awesome. Uh, cool. Uh, all right. Where do, what does the Finch family, stately Finch manor look like? Uh, it's a new house, for sure. Um, because I, like... I'm assuming that Hildy's parents are still alive, so they're living in like the actual Prescott house, and uh, like uh, my my dad had to build uh, a new house for his bride, and so I'm assuming that it's actually kind of gauche by the standards of 1886 because he probably like didn't have the sense to rein in the architects with the grand ideas. Yeah, uh, this is the Gilded Age, so. Gauche is in, dude. Gauche is in. <laughs> then it's ultra gauche. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, I once had the uh, opportunity to take a trip to Newport, Rhode Island, where uh, they they have still have many mansions that you can tour. And there's one I went to. It's like a 16-room house. And like, this was the Vanderbilt summer home? I'm like, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> um, cool. All right. Um. So yeah, you also have servants. Uh, you have an English butler and a French maid because somewhere along the line, that was what people are supposed to have, right? So that's what you have. Uh, all right, so. Um, you've warned them, so I'm not gonna humiliate poor Brody any further. They don't give him the bums rush. They don't make him go around to the service entrance. <laughs> they know he's coming. They let him in the front door. Um, and, you know, the, but the butler is just like, uh, yes, Bastard Finch is waiting for you in the front parlor, Mr. Brody. Uh, thank you, uh, sir. Um... Uh, just uh, just through here. Yes, the I did say the front parlor, sir. Cool. Yeah, and he'll um, he's he's once again wearing his uh, his Sunday suit. That's so cute. <laughs> Terrible. All right, awesome. Uh, I guess so. Opulent sitting room. Is this an opulent parlor? Okay. Yes. Uh, with the big heavy curtains to prevent any light whatsoever from coming in and damaging the furniture. Uh, Joy is sitting there in an extremely fashionable and expensive dress for the fan. Like, oh, this must be uh, Jonathan's here for uh, a little tete a tete. Is that so, uh, Finch? Yes, I've invited him because. Um, I think that he would do well to hear of our, of the expertise we could bring to him in his academic pursuits. Well, of course. Uh, thank you uh, for inviting me, uh, uh, Greenwood, and uh, pleasure to be here with you, uh, Miss Sandling. Well, it's such a such a charming opportunity to meet you outside of uh, the school. And at this point, uh, Finch probably like pours you, or has the servant pour you a cup of tea. Of course, has the uh, footman uh, pour you the cup of tea and then bring it to you. And then uh, indicates that you should sit. Yeah, um, he'll take the tea and uh, sit down um, and just sort of sit with it sort of in his, his lap for the minute. Um, and uh, at this point, uh, Finch actually waves away the servant and says, that'll be all. And then uh, once the servant leaves, he kind of leans in and says, so have you given any thought to my offer? It's a, uh, a very generous offer. It's I 
I'd like to uh learn what you have to teach me, certainly. And she gives a, a bit of a smile and says, uh, well, I'm delighted to hear that. Although I think on our last uh on our last conversation, you hadn't quite shown me exactly how much you wanted it. In fact, I don't think you ever quite mustered the words to really demand anything. Have you given any more thought to that aspect of our conversation? I've no interest in being a uh, being anyone's lackey. Mm. I, my I, lackey, what an interesting word. I, I almost feel as if that's quite contrary to the question I just asked you. In fact, I, I think that I don't want a lackey. I think I want someone who can stand up and take their rightful place. In fact, look at Miss Sanderling here. Look at how she glows. And look at how she radiates just brightness and uh, all the things that she wants in the world. She truly goes after what she wants. She doesn't let anyone stand in her way. Would you call her a lackey? I wouldn't. I think you misunderstand what I'm envisioning here, Mr. Brody. As I said before, I don't really want to order anyone around. I don't really want to have anyone specifically do what I say. I just want to see them shine brightly in the light that I have to offer. I think Joy gets up and sits down very close next to Jonathan and turns and says, yes, please, Jonathan. I mean, Finch wants you to join us. I think you should be with us. In fact, Finch actually slides a little bit closer across the sofa, and you're kind of sandwiched between the two of us now. So, what's in it for you? I merely enjoy basking in the radiance of people shining their brightest. And at this point, I actually, I take the teacup out of your hand. And then uh, as I'm turning, like one of my hands falls on your knee and I'm really to turn someone up. You know, you get enough experience, you'll be able to raise that hot. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and I got a three, so. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Um, so, as that happens, there's a clatter at the door, and you hear the butler talking to someone, and uh, then Magnus comes storming in. Uh, I, stand, I immediately stand up and I walk over. It's like, Magnus, my friend, I didn't realize that this invitation had been extended to you. Well, man, can't I come by and see my best friend? It is most unceremonious to drop in unannounced. Well, you'll forgive me the impropriety, old man. Uh, oh, I see you've uh, got Brody over. Yes, I was just extolling to Brody the virtues of my little, uh, of, of my little group that I have carefully cobbled together. Uh, would you like to join us? So you haven't given up on this plan, eh? Magnus, I, I do think that perhaps let me take your coat here. Let us let us go into the other hall, and uh, I'll I'll put those things away for you. And I try to like get him to leave the room. <laughs> uh, yeah, he'll go with you out of the room. And then I think like in like the the coat hutch, wherever they keep like wherever the certain servants keep the coats, I turn to him and I'm like, Magnus, is there something you need to say? I thought we had this out, old man. Uh, it's not our type. To, and I thought we had had this out before, that I will decide who is our type. It is not merely social status that I look for. It is also the value they bring to the fold altogether. What value is that that 
Jonathan Brody brings to our fold. Oh, my dear Magnus, you think only of the today and the now. Do you not think that the poor man will be useful in the future? Do you not think that it would be wise to have an intelligent man who can form words and can speak to the people in our pockets? Listen, old man, when my father spends our fortune to put me in the United States Senate, then I don't think I'll have much use for Jonathan Brody. So I'm not really sure what exactly it is you uh, you think he brings, I mean, other than certain obvious characteristics. So I, uh, I think I close the distance and I like run a hand down uh, Magnus's cheek, I say. Uh, and then like, and this is what happens, like I run the hand down his cheek and then I move over and I slap him. <gasps> yep, yep. And then I roll the shot someone down. Yeah, you're actually good at those. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, that's a 13. <laughs> yep, that's it. Shut down. Uh, what are you taking? Uh, so, um, on a 10 up, I choose one from the low. Um, does, I don't think he has any strings on me. Um, actually, well, and I'm going to lean into his coward condition as well. So, I would push him to the low. does not have a string on you. That's nice. Yeah. Okay, um, I'm going to gain an additional strain on him then. Nice. Um, uh, just to put him even more in my power. Uh, and then at this point, I'm going to just, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, like, like, he's going to look like shocked in front of it. And I'm going to be like, if the war of the rebellion has taught us anything, it is that the people are no longer satisfied to listen to what we tell them. I will not hear another word of this insolence. We will do as I say, and we will plan for our future. And when your family buys you that seat on the Senate, you will still listen to me. Are we clear? Clear as day, old man. Clear as day. Good. And I lean in and I give him a kiss on the lips, and then I turn and say, shall you join us for tea? Of course, old man. Whatever you want. I would love to hear how Joy and, and Jonathan are getting along while this is out of the thing. So, Jonathan, uh, how is your charming friend, uh, Alice? Uh, sorry, I've lost. Oh, did I lose video? No, I'm um, sorry. No, no, sorry, no, it's okay. Sorry, I was just. Okay. Um, yeah, so Joy leans in and uh, says to you, uh, so how is your charming friend Alice, Jonathan? Um, I, uh, I I need to uh, speak to her, actually, but um, I, I wouldn't say I'm, uh, I'm that close with her, but she seems a nice, uh, nice enough girl. Oh, I I would love for Alice to be part of our little circle too. I think she has a unique viewpoint. Yeah, she uh, she certainly seems uh, smart. Yes. And what about you, Jonathan Brody? Why don't you just give Finch what he wants? We all do eventually. I'm not sure I know exactly what he does want, and... Well, he wants you. That should be enough. At one time or another, he wanted all of us. It would be pleasant, don't you think? No, no offense to to you uh, or uh, or your friends, but I ain't used to all of these games. I suppose you could say. Mm -hmm. Well, games are good training. 
Do you know how to dance, Jonathan Brody? A little, but... Uh... Not well, but a little. Well, think of it as a dance, not a game. See, uh, you men have a uh, disadvantage because you're expected to lead. And so you think that when you dance with people that everything is under your guidance. But trust me, it's not easy to spin around a ballroom going backwards in crinolines. I've learned very ably how to guide any number of clumsy partners as we go through an equus. There's more ways to hold power or to be a member of a set. Not everything is a game because for some people the stakes are far higher. That's uh, I can certainly see what uh, Greenwood sees in you. No, because I talk to you like this. I don't talk to. Oh, there's Finch and Magnus now. <laughs> And we breeze in, and the, the tenor of the, the, our, our pair has changed greatly since uh, we left the room a few minutes ago. And uh, I graciously sit back down an appropriate distance from you on the couch, and I turn to you and I say, I hope that Joy has been entertaining you with her delightful conversations. She uh, certainly has. Uh, yes, she certainly has. He'll nod to her. And then uh, I, at this point, I feel like the, let's see. Uh, and I, I lean back in just a little bit and I say, uh, I hope she's been rather enlightening and has led you to making a decision. I uh, I think she has. Uh, yeah, I think that she has. But uh, Finch kind of like uh, sits up straighter and has like a smile on his face and says, "And uh, and what have you decided?" It's probably best that I uh, make a move now. I've got an early start in the morning, but uh, thank you again for tea. It was uh, lovely to meet with you all. Uh, well, they, you know, they all stand up and like uh, Finch smiles like very kindly to you and just you know goes through the process of like walking towards the door. But just as you're about to leave, he says. Oh, uh, Jonathan, just one thing I want you to know. Potential means nothing without the will to act. And opportunities have a way of slipping by us when we choose to stand aside and wait for things to happen to us. Good night. And closes the door. Well, that also just happened. <laughs> I keep getting shut down. I know. <laughs> I'd like actually a short coda to that scene, if that's okay with uh, Jonathan. Um, sure, yeah. So you start walking home, and of course, this is the point where it starts to rain, because you live a Charlie Brown existence. <laughs> but out of the rain, you hear uh, a, a, a small wagon 
you know, like a buggy or a trap coming up behind you, and it's Magnus. And he looks down at you and says, Can I give you a ride home, Brody? I uh, guess you can. Thank you, Magnus. Um, he'll, yeah. Good. Um, so he's driving you th down uh, through the park because, you know, the finches live a little outside of town. And he reins up, looks at you, and then leans in to try and kiss you. <laughs> um. Yeah, I think um, I'm going to um, let him kiss me uh, for a moment. Um, pull um, pull back a bit. Well, pull away a bit, lean into him and say, and there was me thinking you didn't uh, fuck the help, uh, Magnus. That father like son, I guess. And then I'm going to lean in and kiss him. <laughs> That feels like the appropriate place to cut. <laughs> okay. So, uh, so what's up with Alice? Um, I guess Helen is still here. <laughs> yeah, I guess and Eliza is too. <laughs> yeah, we can have the, a scene with Eliza there. Yeah, I think I see the the rains starting to happen, and then kind of like. Oh shoot! I was meant to be someplace, but I guess that's uh, that's not gonna happen. Um, I don't think I know your friend, my beloved sister. Oh, um, Eliza, this is uh, Helen Fisher. She's a she's a classmate of mine at at the academy. Um, Helen, it's my it's my. My Fisch. sister. Fisher, that's a uh, German name, right? And not Welsh, right? German, yes. Oh, good. Good. Good, I guess the odds on that would have been... Uh... Why? why? Uh, it's nice to meet you, Eliza. Yes. Charmed. Um, I suppose you were studying together. Yes. <laughs> yes. There's nothing untoward about studying, is there, Eliza? Study. Like, look at her temperance banner. Like we, we weren't we weren't drinking. If that's. Oh well, there's not a drop in the house, so. <laughs> no, there really isn't. We've talked about this, sister mine. It's not good for you, for. <laughs> Because of, because, because it's alcohol. No other reason. I, I've not had a single drop, Eliza. You know that. Mm -hmm. you're, you're far too good at what you do um, for that to happen. Ah. Uh -huh. Well. Um, Helen, would you mind if I take my sister into the kitchen and we'll make you a nice cup of tea if you'd like? Uh, no, no, go ahead. Good. Um, just have something to read and she tosses you a temperance pamphlet. <laughs> I, I take out the book that, um, that Alice gave me and I'm reading that. I know what temperance pamphlets say. Uh, the incomplete history of cults. Okay. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's a couple of kids looking for that book. Um, cool. Yeah. So. God. Wait, wait, what crossovers are us today? Um. So, sure. Are you go into the kitchen, and Eliza is just like Alice. I thought we talked about this. Talk, t talked about what? It's it's just a friend from school. What the f well, this is what caused, uh, you know, who to go away. You, 
you don't have to be so coy. I'm not a doll. It's going we to be have great. a guest. <sighs> and yeah, whether or not you're a doll is a very interesting and complicated question. <laughs> you, well, you would know, I guess, Eliza. But if, if you need assurance, no. Helen lives here. She's not some traveler who's going to whisk me away. There's no danger of that happening right now. In fact, the last thing I want to do is leave Kingsport. Um, Eliza, so you to rest your worries. I'll stay here as you want. As long as you want. Well, well now I feel bad. <laughs> I mean, I would like to have you stay with me, of course. You're my sister. And she says that with a straight face. Yeah, I, I wince at that. <laughs> and she's like, yes, and you're, you're mine too, Eliza. I, in many ways, I wouldn't be here if not for you. I have you to thank for that. <laughs> It's a complicated question, but um, Alice, I know that this is hard for you. How could it not be? But that you shouldn't doubt that you have a place here and you, sh you shouldn't doubt that I want you here. I know. I know, Eliza, but Sometimes you know, doubts, you know how it is, doubts happen. And I don't have your experience or anyone's. I'm just here, expected to fill a role that was already filled. Well, that's not really true, is it? The Alice that left was a wild girl and she ran away. So that role was never filled. The role of sister who would stay and help me and loyal daughter and yes, someone who will learn and teach and have a place in the community. What do you think? What do you think you know who was going to do? She ran off with a Welsh scullery maid and jumped on a ship and... <laughs> She's probably halfway to Good Horn, Cape Horn, if she hasn't drowned. No, no, that's that's true. That's that's not a role I would like to fill. I would I would have wanted to fill. That doesn't feel like me, I guess. But well, no, I mean, it should. It definitely shouldn't. <laughs> no, no. Um, I just I. I just need help, I guess. Um, you're, you're always so clear-headed. You know what, what you want out of the world. I kind of do, but as I've, told, I've recently figured out, there's a difference between wanting it and having it. Well, and she, she looks very puzzled for a second because she realized what you just said. <laughs> Well, I wanted, I wanted to have my sister, and here you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you, you, yeah, you, you got, you got your wish. I, I'm here. I'm, I'm not going to leave. I'm figuring it all out. But the last thing I want to do is break your heart. Again. Oh wow, that's really sweet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, she's, she's disgustingly sweet. I didn't realizing that you know, over the past couple of hours. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. Uh, all right. So, what do you do next? I guess by now the kettle is probably boiling. So. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, the, I think I'm bring tea back to Helen. Oh, you know, you had to stoke the, uh, you had to stoke the stove. Okay. Oh, right. Yeah. 
Yeah, 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 no, no, yeah, no, no, (laughs) no. Okay, no, it wasn't just turning on a, pushing a button. No, (laughs) what's Helen doing? I want to know what Helen's doing. Well, um, yeah, I think I think um, reading that book and um and probably like having more feelings about this situation than she expected to have. <laughs> I think, hmm, I could stay and like make the tea and maybe Eliza talks to Helen and say, like, what are you doing? What are you really doing? Never yeah, that, that actually works. So yeah, <laughs> Eliza comes out and she takes off the sash and hangs it up on the coat rack and she and just turns around and puts a, a hand on her waist and uh, it's like, so Helen, is it right? Uh, yes. Here's the thing. Uh, my sister is... Um, of a somewhat Bostonian um, persuasion in that she would probably prefer a Boston marriage. And that's all well and good. Who am I to judge? Whatever. It's, it's not like, it's not like I, um, it's not like it's the most difficult thing I've had to come to terms with in my life, but I don't know that it's necessarily such a good idea for you, my dear, to, uh, to be with her. She is going through a number of things right now, and uh, she's not really sure of who she is yet. And uh, this is a very trying time for her. So perhaps it would make sense if you, uh, you know, didn't do that. She doesn't know who she is, you say? Well, I mean, you're you're a young woman of the same age. Surely you know how difficult it is to find your place. And I mean, frankly, most girls her age would be wondering about who they would end up marrying. And uh, yes, so in this case, maybe not as much. So, um, I mean, I don't know. I don't know how that works. I really, I, I, I really don't know how it works at all. And mm, not marriage? that interested I... in finding it. No, um, yeah, marriage. Um, well, I, I intend to be married one day um, to a fine Christian gentleman who I'm sure uh, will treat me the uh, way I'm supposed to, and we will have a loving marriage, and I will be a helpmeet. But the point is, is that, that Alice is still figuring out who she is. That's there's nothing wrong with that. No, it's just a very tra- fragile time for her. She's very, very fragile. Uh, I, she definitely was very fragile recently. So, um, I I just think it's for both your interest if you um, perhaps were to create a little distance. I mean, you know, just you'll see her at school. I know, I know, Headmaster what Goodfellow. What do you think I'm going to do for your sister? Break, b- break her heart. Oh. Oh. I um. I have, I have no intention of doing that. Well, but... that's the thing about having someone's heart broken. Very rarely does anybody set out to do it. I had a bow. And, uh, well, I'm not. I am neither betrothed nor married. So it. But I'm. I, I'm sure Sally Miller. I'm sorry. Sally Harrison is going to be very. Will be very happy for a long time. So. I'm sorry to hear that. I. Oh, you, th- oh, you think, no, uh, 
actually i'm not sure you think your sister is going to fall in love with me and then i'm going to to marry a man is that what you're asking i'm just pointing out that certainly jim didn't set out to break my heart oh. it just happened I, well, I, I'm, I'm glad you care so much about your sister. I, you have no idea what I would do for my sister. Um, no, I, I don't, I've never met you before. Of course I don't oh, know. That's fair. Let's just say I would go to extraordinary lengths to help my sister. Well, that's... I suppose that's good. Um... Yes. So, um, here's a cup of tea. Oh, here's Alice with some tea. And uh, why don't we all have a nice civilized cup of tea together? And uh, then I'm sure you you must be on your way. I don't want to keep you here any longer than is necessary. <laughs> oh, are you are you going, Helen? I, um, I, I suppose I, I suppose I must be. Um... Well, I'll see, I'll see you in school then, if if you need to go. Um, I, I, I I'm not. And I like kind of look down at the book and I just start asking questions like, oh, have you read this? This is fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay. <laughs> so where do we want to go from here? Uh, Jonathan and Magnus are a thing. Finch is, I'm sure, forging it up back at home. Um, and Alice hasn't been talked to by everybody yet. Just about everybody. <laughs> this is true. Uh, so, uh, from where I sit, uh, which is at a desk, <laughs> It seems to me that the options would be for Jonathan to talk to Alice, or perhaps for Alice to uh, take a little trip to Wonderland again. Um, but I would also entertain suggestions from the floor. I was going to say, I'm certainly intending to go and see Alice, um, but but whether we do that now or next time, is I'm I'm happy either way. Let's do that. Let's do that this time, and uh, then next week we can maybe pick the, pick up the other threads. So I just want to—I haven't had a chance to, to have an interact with Helen at all, uh, like this episode. So oh, that's true. Yeah, I am sorry about that. <laughs> no, it's it's fine. Our 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 plots like diverged, but I just um like it, it would be nice is all. So yeah, that's actually a good idea too. Um. How would that work? I'm sure it's like a late night crossed paths. I'm sure I'm a little bit more put together this time. Maybe I've escorted Joy home. And... Yeah. Well, it's raining and Helen is walking home. So <laughs> that seems yeah. to be the theme today is carriage yeah. pickups. <laughs> so, so um, yeah, we, we like roll past and like, I like have him stop the carriage and uh, like, the footman opens the door, and I'm just like, "Is that you, Miss Fisher?" Oh, oh, uh, Mr. Greenwood. Yeah, hi, hi. Well, it certainly doesn't do to have you walking in the rain. Why don't you climb in, and I'll drop you off. And there's like a hesitation because you know, last time I got in a coach <laughs> with some random person, um, it ended up. Very, uh, very oddly, but um, well, I'm sure it'll end just as oddly this time. <laughs> yes. Uh, hey, you're, at least you're you're not a, a a strange woman asking me to. 
I don't know. Designs. Yeah, exactly. So that's that's a you know it's a step up. <laughs> Too bad. Yeah. It's close. Yeah. yeah, I. I I'll, I'll get in. So, um, of course, I, I, I offer you the seat, and uh, I even pull like one of the blankets that's uh, probably stowed there, and allow you to like, like I rest it over your lap or something like that, yeah. and just say, "Oh, oh Miss, Miss Fisher, why are you why are you walking all by yourself in the dark, in the rain?" Well, you know, I. I, I I was just going home. And where might you be going home from? Um, uh, our, our uh, what is Alice's last name? I don't remember. Oh, McBride. Um, Miss McBride's uh, house. Oh, so that's where she got to. Um, her her house. Yes. That's it. Well, I suppose I will have to have a talk with her. You know, Miss McBride was supposed to be having tea with me this afternoon. Oh. Um. Oh, of course, I don't. I don't hold it against you in the slightest, Miss Miss Fisher. I, I definitely think that it is Miss McBride's choice for how she spends her time, and I will take that into account in the future. Um. Of, of course, it's. Of course, it's her choice. Um, and I, I think like I have nothing to say to this but like there's this kind of just very pleased look on my face because like oh it's yeah it was her choice and and she chose to spend her time with me and but I I do I am just smart enough to not say that <laughs> So I think that for a man as shrewd as Finch, though, your face says everything it needs to. I, I think so. I don't think that, you know, that, that cold, of, cold of negative one. <laughs> um, I don't think uh, I, I'm terribly good at uh, keeping my feelings to myself. I think at that point, actually, uh, Finch, um, Finch is curious. And then, uh, so I think what he does is actually he takes that and he leans in a little bit more and he's like, why Miss Fisher, you're positively glowing. Has some great news befallen you? Um, no, it, it, I, I'm just cold because of the rain. Oh, well, be sure to wrap that blanket a little tighter. Here, let me, and he goes in to adjust the blanket. Um, thank you, I, I'll, I'll, I'll be fine. I just, uh, you know, it's, I didn't, I didn't quite realize how cold the uh, cold it was when I started out. I, I appreciate the ride home. Uh, and what? He actually like reaches forward and he like takes you by your hand. It's like, and your fingers, they're so cold as well. Here, let me warm them with my hands. <laughs> um, thank you. I... What, I'm rolling to turn. Uh, yeah, it's, <laughs> I'm just gonna, uh, and it's a it's six. So yeah, it doesn't work. Yeah, <laughs> I will eventually uh, successfully <laughs> turn someone on <laughs> someday. <laughs> You're queen with low charisma. How does that even work? You really, you really make me do work, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> um, I. So I, I think cool. that the, the six means that like your your efforts to do this are so obvious that even um, someone as gullible as me <laughs> has like is is aware of what you're doing and it, it's a little bit uh, it, so there there are circumstances when being aware of what you're doing it would like it would be uh, it would be good it would be like oh yeah he likes me but it's it's I think it's off putting. I think you probably maybe even get like the idea that I'm not doing it with like your best intentions or like yeah. even because there's there's a little bit of a creepy vibe here. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, I I I I appreciate the ride. Oh, um, yeah, my my house is right right down here. <laughs> 
So at this point, uh, I think you like maybe you get up to leave, but like I kind of like push my hand against the door and I lean in a little bit closer and I say, Miss Fisher, I think that I need to make something perfectly clear here. I am interested in Miss McBride. She's a delightful little puzzle that I can't wait to solve. And I think it would be best if you kept your distance from her. Well, as you said, it's her choice. So I think there's one more thing I want to do is I think I'm kind of emboldened by how I put everyone else in their place. And so I kind of like look you in the eyes and I'd like to gaze into the abyss because I'm trying to look inside you. Wow, what's your question here? Uh, so my question is, I want to know um, what, uh, I, I'd like to see if I could find out what Helen and Alice shared so that I can find a way to use that against Alice. And that could go potentially wrong. <laughs> so see how this goes. I have a dark plus one, so there's a slight possibility this will not work out terribly. Oh, and it's a 13. <laughs> wow. Okay. Lucid visions. Um, yeah. Um, you get something that uh, it'll take many more decades for people to come up with a term, but we would call it split screen. <laughs> <laughs> and what you see is Helen and Alice on the couch and uh, Magnus and Jonathan in the carriage. <laughs> yeah, I don't know that I don't know how much how far, far that all that whole scene went, but uh, you definitely see the kiss. Uh, yeah, I, like, my eyes grow really wide, and, uh, like, you just see me, like, lean back, and I start to fume, and, like, and that's the, like, a, like a petulant child, like, arms crossed, like, legs crossed, like, body posture tightened up, and, yeah, I don't even, like, I, like, I stop acknowledging you altogether, even though you get the sense that something happened. Yeah. Um, I, I think I just assume that, uh, like my, you know, it's her choice. You were reacting to that somehow, like, oh, you know, um, even though like, basically, even though I wasn't quite meaning to shut you down, I think that I, like, like, I think I accidentally did. <laughs> <laughs> I was definitely shut down. <laughs> uh, yeah. And, you know, it's, as soon as, like, I kind of, as, as soon as you, like, let go your hold on the door, I'm, like, opening it. I'm, like, I'll, I'll, I'll see you at school and go out into the rain. And, yeah, I walk the other half mile home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't even say anything. I'm, like, the driver just takes us back to the Greenwood Manor. Oh, <laughs> I feel sort of bad for Finch right now. <laughs> He just wants to be in power. <laughs> All I want is that everybody just give me what I want. <laughs> I want everyone to love me. <laughs> uh, it's, probably, it's probably good you haven't shown any political ambition. <laughs> you shutting down the Massachusetts state government. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. <laughs> uh, political commentary, folks at home. Um, wow. Uh, okay. We got a couple minutes left. Uh, does anybody want to wrap anything up here? Um, yeah, as I, say, I might just, um, have a quick word with us. I don't, don't see it taking particularly long. Um, if, if that's that, cool with that you, Landry. Works. Yeah, sure. Uh, is this happening the same night? Or are you busy with me? I, I think so. I think so. Um, I think, um, Probably, yeah, after um, after saying goodbye to Magnus, um, he, he's actually going to then walk back, you know, partway across town to where um, the McBrides uh, live. Um, um, 
I think you meet Alice. I think Alice has snuck out of the house to go to Wonderland, so to speak. She's distracted Eliza by nicking a trick from old Alice's book and getting her worked up and ranting about alcohol, getting her really tired. And then just, yeah, she, Eliza gets worked up really quickly and easily. And, and Alice knows this works because this is what the other Alice used to do um, to sneak out. And she feels weird about that. Um, using a trick from someone she's trying to get away from. But yeah, I think we'll run into the dark. Maybe, hmm, maybe kind of like in, in like in like a park area as well. Just make them. Sure, sure. Um, so, yep. Yeah, um, um, oh, come up there. Oh, uh, Miss McBride, I was, uh, I was coming to find you. Huh? Um, oh, oh, um, Jonathan. Yes. Oh, I, I didn't think. Sorry, sorry. You were coming to find me. Yeah, just looking I, around. It's. Uh, did have you uh, have you spoken to uh, Miss Fisher? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've spoken to uh, to Helen. Uh, <laughs> I I why? guess. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I guess she told you. Uh, We had a strange encounter earlier. Um, oh. Uh, I mean, this sounds like a, a practical joke, uh, but we met the uh, Queen of Hearts, and uh, oh, she she said to tell you not to uh, not to go no. and visit somebody. But um, look, I I don't know what's going on with that with with her with whatever but just i just wanted to say to be careful i mean she was weird like real weird uh, i think i was here's that and she's gonna just sighs and just oh i don't worry i i've heard this from helen and i appreciate that instead of Trickery or whatnot, the two of you came straight to me. And she kind of leans closer to you. And she's like, I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Brody. This is very important to me. And if I stop now, I will know what will happen to me. Or, or just me. No, no, let's, I'd like to be selfish for once. No, it's just, I don't know what will happen to me if I stop. And I appreciate that you're looking out for me, Mr. Rowley, but I know what I'm playing with far more than anyone else. And I'm sorry, but if you want me to stop, as the Red Queen says so, you're going to have to do more than a kind word. All I promised was I'd, I'd talk to you about it. I ain't gonna do no more than that. What did you ask? What did you, what did you say you want? I didn't. I wasn't sure you'd listen. <laughs> You've made up your mind. Just, she said there was someone else involved, and I'm just worried. Things could get dangerous, is all. But you got to do what you need to do. Yes, I need this, uh, Jonathan, hmm. more than anything in the world. But... Oh, and uh, it, it's the Queen of Hearts. Uh, Red Queen's a second book. Yeah, hmm. I don't think I've read this book. I'm sorry. <laughs> I should I should read it. What's 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 the book? Alice in Wonderland, uh, and Through the Looking Glass is the uh, the second. Huh. Huh. Well, 
Brody, uh, Jonathan, mm -hmm. sorry. Um, you and Helen are good people. You're... I think where I'm going, I don't know if I'd want either of you to follow. So what you said to me, please do the same for yourself. Be careful. Sure thing. Well, I don't want to make you late, so. Thank you. I'll, I'll see you in school then. Yeah, see you in school. Yeah. I was, I was off to Wonderland. <laughs> oh my God. Wow. Okay. I, I'm going to have to think about this one for a while. <laughs> what happened, actually? Uh, mostly it was um, ritualistic. <laughs> so uh, that was fantastic. I'm looking forward to seeing you all uh, next time. Uh, it's kind of weird that I feel like I have a little extra space to do stuff here because uh, I guess I get the extra episode. So that'll be fun. Um, cool. So I put a link up to our Discord if you want to chat after the game. And uh, other than that, uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing you all again. Uh, this has been a lot of fun. So, all right. Take care, guys.